Hi there, I'm John of John's Carnivorous Plants and this is my indoor nursery. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to grow Heliamphora ionzii, a he uh, South American pitcher plant species. And it's very beautiful and relatively easy to grow. In this video, you'll find out everything you need to know to grow one in your own home. So please check out the description for all of the relevant sections of this video in timestamp form so you can skip around to wherever you need to go. Links to all the products mentioned and a link to my nursery page where you can buy one of these beautiful plants for me directly. I also have my Discord link in there where I do live Q&As every Thursday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you can see the nursery live every week if you would like. I also hop on usually about twice a day, so if you have any other questions, go ahead post them in the channels or send me a message directly if that's you know more your style and i'll get back to you as quick as i can please like and subscribe i hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching The first and most important point to cultivating any carnivorous plant is climate. You need to provide a stable climate for long-term success. This includes temperature, humidity, and airflow. To maintain a stable climate of 40 to 80% humidity, 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and steady airflow, I suggest the following. Use a humidifier near your grow area to maintain humidity. Bags, clear plastic cups, and humidity domes work, but these options are a poor replacement for ambient humidity. Bags and plastic cups in particular can amplify the sun and roast plants with high sun exposure if grown on a windowsill. Use a space heater or air conditioner to keep your temperature between 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Going too far out of this temperature range can cause stress to the immune systems of the plants and lead to more fungal and pest infections. To measure your grow area's climate, I highly recommend purchasing a thermometer or humidity gauge like this one. There's a link in the description to buy one from Amazon. The next important point to cultivating carnivorous plants is lighting. The sun is the best light you can have for your plants. Since most homes do not have windowsills that provide enough light, indoor growers are left to using indoor LED grow lights. Here you can see that I use an array of different fixtures. No matter what kind of lights you use, make sure to drape the cords before going to your outlet to prevent water-related electrical fires. An appropriately rated timer for your lights is critical to the long-term health of your plants. As a quick overview, lighting sources should be four to six inches away from most species of carnivorous plants. I recommend Yescom 225 lights as they cost around $30 off Amazon and work great for smaller collections. You can use four foot LED shop lights from most big box stores as well. I have a link in the description to the red blue sun coat lights that I use for some of my racks. Make sure that you provide at least 12 hours of direct light to your plants a day. Going under this amount can stress certain tropical plants. Like climate shifts, this can lead to decreased immune function. Even plants like to sleep and some like Biblis only digest prey at night. As a safety tip, make sure you drape your cords and have a low spot to prevent water related electrical fires. If you are growing your plants outside or on a window, use the species specific lighting preference later in this video as a guide to how much exposure the plant should receive. For more sensitive carnivorous plants and particularly highland plants, I'll use a mix of long fiber sphagnum moss. You can buy bales of this off Amazon for relatively cheap or find it at a local hardware store or nursery. I will sometimes mix this with perlite to allow for a little bit more drainage. Next up, water. First thing you need is a TDS meter like this. It'll measure the total dissolved solids in your water. You need water with under 100 parts per million of total dissolved solids for carnivorous plants. Here you can see my tap water comes in at around 100 parts per million. Next, my reverse osmosis filtered water clocks in at 12 parts per million. To water, I use the tray method, watering from the bottom of the pot. I fill these trays one to two inches up the pot and refill the trays once the tray is dry, but before the medium dries. For a quick overview, make sure to have a TDS meter and only use water under 100 parts per million of total dissolved solids. Tap water is usually unusable, so make sure to test it before use. Distilled water from a grocery store, pharmacy, or other store will work. Nursery water will also work. Water from an air conditioner or dehumidifier can be used, but is not recommended for the long term. Use the tray method of watering. Make sure the water is at least one inch from the bottom of the pot. If the soil dries, the plant dies. Top water all plants except pinguicula and some small rosetta drosera every two months to prevent mineral buildup, 
promote oxygen exchange, and prevent most fungal growth. Lastly, to fertilize or feed carnivorous plants, I use Maxi 161616 fertilizer and apply it as a foliar feed. You can mix a small amount with water and use an eyedropper or pipette, but I prefer to use a missing bottle. I'll take small amounts on a plant tag and shake vigorously to mix. To be accurate, the mixture clocks in around 100 parts per million. I miss the plant's foliage thoroughly for about 30 minutes before lights go off every two weeks. Make sure to spray at an angle perpendicular to the pot to prevent excess fertilizer. This can cause algae growth that can be easily scraped away. Utricularia can be fed by spraying the topsoil, but back off if you see algae mats forming. Helium for Ionazi is an absolutely stunning and beautiful helium for a species to grow in any collection. It prefers temperatures of around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 80 degree, well, you know, 80 degrees, 80 percent humidity, 12 hours of light plus on, and it's pretty much a medium difficulty plant. If you have success with other carnivorous plants and you listen to what I am about to tell you, you should have some success. Make sure you keep some kind of dome over top of it or some kind of humidity dome. If you don't have like a cup that's like a clear plastic, plastic cup or something like that, just anything to keep more humidity on this plant as possible. As it gets larger, it generally becomes more difficult, which is why in my collection I like to keep them rather stunted and I don't give them much root space so they don't get as large. But if you up pot this and let it go crazy you can get some pretty sizable pictures out of it but then you run into the problem of well you might need to make some kind of misting system or something else to uh, keep it very uh, wet <laughs> so they're native to a rain desert so it's constantly raining on top of the tapuis where they grow so that's why it's imperative to try and replicate that environment in your home which can be easily accomplished by just keeping them very humid and make sure you top water them as opposed to tray water them because tray watering has a tendency to rot the roots out and prevent them from getting as large or as vigorous. <laughs> As you can see here, to divide Heliamphora, you'll see a small little division attached to the main rhizome, which you pull back and you can get it to pull away. Generally, you want to have them with roots, but sometimes that's not possible, like in this case. So you just find it where it seems like it's splitting off as you uproot it, pull it back, and it'll snap off. Ones without roots will generally take a month or two to root if you leave them in long fiber sphagnum moss and give them enough humidity. Thank you for watching this far. I have links in the description to other great reference videos done by other nursery owners for the International Carnivorous Plant Society. These include a pesticide discussion from Damon of California Carnivores and a lighting presentation from Drew of Carnivoro. There's also a link to Barry Rice's Carnivorous Plant FAQ, which has been invaluable to my own learning. Once again, if you want to try growing carnivorous plants or expand your collection, check out my website. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more carnivorous plant content. I wish you happy growing and great success. Thanks again.